I want to go back to an earlier question about just the low-hanging fruit and the, the easy ones. Derek Chauvin, the cop in Minneapolis who was convicted of murdering George Floyd. Now we know he didn't murder George mm-hmm. Floyd. Medical examiner said there's no evidence that George Floyd was strangled. He died of a fentanyl overdose, mm-hmm. died of a drug OD. Yep. But Derek Chauvin is in prison. He was just stabbed in prison. Spend the rest of his life probably in prison. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a an atro- moral atrocity mm-hmm. now that we know the truth. Why is no one in Congress stepping up for this man? Well, you know, it's very unpopular to talk about it. So Why? obviously, Tucker, I'm going to talk about well, it. Good. Yeah, I think I, I do believe this is one of the biggest injustices happening in our country today. I believe it's an attack on him because he's white and he's male. Obviously. I believe that it's political and they have to crucify him because he was a police officer. He had a great record. He did nothing wrong. And he is white and male and Christian. So they have to make an example of him because that is the type of person in America and arguably the entire world they want to kill. They want to destroy that identity. And it's the most dangerous thing happening, and our children are suffering for it. The younger generations of white men who are good, who who would want to be in the military, who want to be a police officer when they grow up, want to be a fireman, want to be these ideal male, masculine things when they grow up, are being taught a lesson by look at what happens to Derek Chauvin. And he, they are probably going to kill him in jail when actually the right thing to do is to release him out of jail because he never did anything wrong in the first place. But how do you, what I don't understand is now that it's not a close call because in a court filing, we discover that the medical examiner who did the autopsy mm-hmm. said, the medical examiner, not a cable news pundit, this guy was not strangled. He did not die of asphyxiation. He died of a drug OD. Drug overdose. So we know the facts. Right, a fentanyl. Which we didn't know before. We pretended we didn't know. Like, so how can every pro-cop Republican in the Congress not stand up on this guy's behalf? Why is it controversial? Over 300 Americans die every single day from fentanyl poisoning. That's what George Floyd, he's one of those deaths. Yeah, sad. But yet, a political movement that was well-funded and supported by the entire Democrat Party, so much so that BLM's link, funding link, was on Act Blue, the Democrat Party's website, official website. It was propped up by the entire powerful media industry in America. And then every every Democrat donor all over the country donated to BLM and supported the Democrats for supporting BLM. And then they sacrificed a white male police officer. It had to be done because that's what their movement wants. That is exactly what they want. Look at what's happening today over in Sudan. There are thousands of people being slaughtered, millions of people maybe. We don't even know the numbers being slaughtered by Muslims If Black Lives Matters, why isn't that group and the entire Democrat Party raging over supporting black lives over in this foreign country? Because they love foreign war, don't they? I mean, it doesn't make sense. But yet in America, they obviously don't care at all about some other country in Africa where people are being killed because they don't care about black lives. It's not about black lives. It's not about any foreign war. It's only about certain foreign wars. And it's about certain movements that allows them to move the political needle and brainwash the masses to believe what they need them to believe. They sacrificed Derek Chauvin because he's white and he's male, and they want to kill off a whole generation of white men. They don't, they don't want them to be police officers. They don't want them to join the military. They don't want them to be strong figures in their family or husbands or fathers. Well, they, they say all that, so that's not you're not guessing. We need more diversity in our police. We need fewer white men in our police department. That's mm-hmm. what they're saying. Mm-hmm. So um, your assessment is not crackpot. It's taking their words and repeating them. Um, so what? Ex- so you've just, in about as blunt terms as anyone could muster, displayed your contempt for a lot of your colleagues in the Republican Party. Mm-hmm. I'm angry at them. Obviously, you're not going to become a Democrat because they're the mirror image of Satan. What you are. So where does that leave you, and what do you do going forward? I ran for Congress in the beginning to push the Republican Party to actually support Americans and America and do the things that they always promise and tell us to do. Going forward, that's all I care about. That's all I've cared about from the beginning is, oh, you want to say this on television? Well, do it. Like, take, I don't care about words. Words mean nothing to me. Action is everything. And our country is on fire. We don't have a border it's ridiculous to even say we have one. 
It's overrun and controlled by the cartels, mostly. The Border Patrol agents are the welcoming committee to over 160 countries all over the world. They welcome in terrorists. They welcome in criminals, mental, in, 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 mentally insane people, child trafficking, human trafficking, drugs. They are forced to welcome them in. It's not because they're bad people. They're wonderful people. The government makes them do their job that way. So think about like what we have to force Republicans in Congress actually do what they said they're going to do. So I'm not there to be friends with them. I don't care about the stupid <laughs> I, I've party. noticed. <laughs> I want them to do their job. You've been uh, swatted repeatedly. Yeah. Um, where seven times. Seven times. Mm -hmm. But they don't know who's doing it. They just don't know. No, can't figure that out. Did the security cameras break? It's kind of like Epstein. They can unmask people like Carter Page and people like that, you know. But they don't know who's, who's swatting me. Who's calling in? Um. Seven times. Mm -hmm. Are you worried about your safety? I just bought a lovely AR-15. Really? Another one. Yes, I'm very proud of it. It's pretty. I hope it doesn't have a, more than a 10-round magazine, though, because you don't need that. Oh, no. Yeah, I know we've got far more than that. Um, two quick policy questions. One, will there be, like, an effort to take people's guns away in our lifetimes, do you think? Absolutely, Do you think yes. that'll be successful? Well, I look at Brazil. I just had a visit from Edward Bolsonaro and some of the members of Congress down there in Brazil, and they came to visit me because they are really afraid and they're concerned for their country. Since the Lula administration has taken over, many of them are afraid of losing their political rights, and the Lula administration is going after them and trying to take away their political rights to run for office. They're going after their journalists, their press. You know, Many of them are fleeing the country because they, they're going to be locked up by the Lula administration. Um, they want to take away their guns down there in Brazil. So I'm looking at that country and I'm saying, I think we're one election away from finding ourselves in the same situation in Brazil. And it's the saddest thing in the world to think that that's where we are in America. But yet so many people are asleep. And it's a tragedy because... I'm angry at my own party in Washington because they're not doing enough to stop it. They're not yes. doing anything to stop it. As a matter of fact, they're passing continuing resolutions and keeping it going. But I'm also looking at so many Americans because our American life is really good, Tucker. And it's easy to get lost and enjoying every day as an American. And a gosh, God bless them, rightfully so. But it's, it's easy to be lulled into this world where you're not paying attention to what's about to happen to us. Young here people say the news is full of lies. Kennedy's motorcade. 239 people. The death of Jeffrey Epstein.